Fazio is a communist. He marched with the Sandinistas. Another thing is his name is not actually de Blasio. His name is Warren Wilhelm Jr. He took his mother's his mother's father's maiden uh, her mother's maiden name and made it de Blasio. So if you can't even stand up for who you are with your name, and you're gonna be a fake phony and a fraud from then, well then, you know, that tells us a whole bunch right there. But I didn't know that at that time. So I went after de Blasio for those issues. And how dare you protest against our country. But what I did was I waited my turn. So they had their B and C reporters, their D reporters, their ABC, CBS, uh, the Daily News, the New York Post. And uh, Bornstein spoke, and then de Blasio got up. He said his few words. And you know, we're going to make everything all better. Oh yeah, OK. So he gets off. I said, wait, wait, excuse me, uh, Your Honor. Uh, you did not take a um, question from a concerned citizen. <laughs> and from there, it went. <laughs> and he says, what's your question? And my question is simple. Why did you uh, go to Hamburg, Germany, and protest our, the man did not know what to do. <laughs> OK? And as he proceeded down to get away from me, I then chased him about the police officers. And you're talking about $18 million to dollars to trim trees. And you're talking about $18 million. Put it in your police officer's pockets. And it went on from there. Mm -hmm. Watch the video. It's on the Vicky for Senate page. <laughs> <laughs> but the funny thing is, when I say about the right moment, the right time, and things happen in people's lives for a reason, is because, A, I did not know I was being recorded by my husband, who had just gotten a phone. And the biggest joke was, he doesn't know how to use his phone. I mean, you know, what does Tommy know about a phone? And that was the thing. He was actually recording me. The second thing was, um, when the Post came up to me, the Daily News came up to me, did a couple of little one, two, threes. I would not talk to the Post. I told that young man, go away. I said, I will not give you a moment of my time. I just because you're going to distort everything I say. I said, if one thing I can't stand is when I'm distorted, because I pretty well make my message loud, clear, and you can't take uh, with what I say. So anyway, so I spoke. We came home. That was, now the next thing that happened was my son Thomas John happened to be at home that day. He popped in from the city. So we walk in the back door like it's nothing. It's a July night, July afternoon. It was hot. We walk in, Thomas says, oh, hi, how you doing, guys? I says, good. I says, uh, his father then says, oh, your mother got into a row with the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> so Thomas John's reaction was, Ma, what'd you do now? <laughs> so I said, oh, nothing. It was just, you know, about going to, I uh, just had it with this man. And it went off. And as soon as I walked in the door, the post called. And my son, my husband said, I got her on recording. When my son saw the recording, he couldn't believe it. He says, you actually sent it her. She actually got, you did a great job. I'm going to put this up. <laughs> Bam. I got about a million views. Wow. But the most important thing of all was, and the most moving thing for me and my family, was that over 500 police officers, wives, widows, husbands, moms, dads, took the time. They probably Googled me or whatever they did. I was a nobody. I'm nothing. I'm a kitchen table politicker all my life, but an outspoken person all the time. So if given the opportunity, and there were many. So um, I and my husband were answering phone calls. I was just so moved by them. And I kept and I still have on my, because I use a hard line. I have a hard line in my phone. My cell phone is not my primary phone when I go home. And I hope I reach Mrs. Palladino because if I did, I want you to know there's a special place in heaven for people like you. Oh, I could cry because I was getting countless things like that. We were overwhelmed. And um, that was not my goal. My goal was just to, I was angry. And my goal was just to make it known that we the people do not need to 
do as you say, we don't need to march in lockstep, and by the police officers turning their back on you, that made it very clear to you, de Blasio, where you sit, you don't even get the respect from your police officers. He was the only New York City mayor, not to tell anybody that he was flying to Hamburg, Germany, and when he missed the commencement exercises of the first ever mayor to miss the commencement exercises of a graduating class from the police academy. And I nailed him on that too. So what happened was Bo Dito called me, Nicole Maliotakis called me. Who the hell expected any of this? And one thing went to another. Um, I, interview, I spoke with Nicole's people, I spoke with Dito's people, interviews talking to me, and you know, I, I spoke to them plain and clear, um, and we set it up, whatever we set up, I went to different, I met Bo, I met Nicole, and uh, Bo Dito's campaign may as well have been a kindergarten playground. <laughs> it was an absolute disgrace. Yeah. Absolute disgrace. And when I saw that he put John Haggerty on his team, now John Haggerty, I don't know much about it that standpoint. I just know that there was a lot of problems with Haggerty in Queens, and he caused a lot of division. So um, when I saw that he was the man behind the green curtain, because nobody would hire John Haggerty because he's a convicted felon. <laughs> so embezzling and serve time uh, for embezzling close to a million dollars, it was actually over a million dollars, but they got him on seven hundred fifty thousand um, dollars. And when I saw that, and plus I saw Bo's team, I said, "This is not for me. I'm in this serious. This is Mayor De Blasio. We got to get him out. We need somebody who's going to fight and get De Blasio out. This is not time to play games. There's no room for this nonsense." So I said to Bo, "Remember it like it was yesterday." And I said to Bo, I want to know, because Haggerty wouldn't even shake my hand. So, because uh, when he walked me around the board table. So I said, okay. I said to Bo in the car, I said, Bo, ask, answer me a question, please. Why, what, and what the hell is John Haggerty doing upstairs? Why do you have him? He said, well, everybody deserves a second chance for I said, look, I agree with you. Nobody here wears halos. Nobody. I said, but what you got there is a big problem. I said, you better grow eyeballs in the back of your head, because you're going to need them. <laughs> and I never was invited back to One Penn Plaza again. I then put in my resignation with the Dito campaign, because I signed a contract with the Dito campaign. I, going in green, I thought I was just going to volunteer for a campaign and work with him and so on and so forth. <clears throat> but no, they had me signed. Why did they sign me? They signed me to shut me up because they knew damn well Maliotakis' campaign wanted me very badly. And that was very flattering. Letitia is wonderful. Tony Herbert, wonderful. And her staff amazing people in Staten Island, the women she had surrounding her that knew her from days of college. Energetic, terrific. So what they did was they did not, even though my resignation went in, they took their sweet time to okay and to acknowledge my resignation. So by the time I was released from my obligation, which was a gag order basically, um, it was only a several weeks before the actual election day. So I want to clear, that's, I'm going through this, so I want to clear this up for anybody who has heard stories or whatever. This is how it went, this is how it happened, this is how it went down. And I called Letitia, and I said to Letitia, I am now available. Mm -hmm. If you want me, I will do anything you need me to do to help get Nicole elected. So I went out for her for the last two or three weeks on the campaign trail, and then we went to what we hoped was going to be a victory dinner. 860,000 people turned out to vote, people, in 9 million people who live in New York City. Okay? 
she, he got 625,000 votes. Nicole ended up with 200 and change. Bo was barely a bleep on a screen. So, when de Blasio, as I went through video after video that I did on behalf of just getting him the hell out, I would have voted for friggin' Mickey Mouse <laughs> rather than vote for de Blasio. Um, the videos I was doing at that time was all about what was on his table. The breakup of Rikers Island, <coughs> the homeless shelters that are coming, the injection sites that are coming, the overbuilding that is coming, the just general disdain for the middle class of this city. And he was going to do something called block busting. And what that means is when he sees a, some sort of conservative, semi-conservative area, he was going to make sure he put in a homeless shelter there. It's very, very methodically <laughs> thought out. However, he was in office for three and a half, four years, and if you vote him in, again, this is what's going with him. Because what he did was he laid out a blueprint of his plan. Now, what did we do? We didn't. But 625,000 other people did. They emboldened this man and re-elected this man. So everything he had sitting on his desk, he was ready to put into full swing as soon as he got re-elected. So hang your heads in shame, because not only do we have a mayor that was re-elected, and you know, everybody says, Vicky, don't go all in a communist. I'm sorry. He's a communist. And I won't, I don't regret that. Ooh, yes. Ooh, yes. Watch, watch what this you say. Right please, please, shh, shh. Watch what you say. He's a socialist. Yes, there's socialistic tendencies. Absolutely. <coughs> it starts with socialism, it leans towards communism. So now we vote in an entire democratic city council. Now New York City is under siege. Yes. So that evening at what was supposed to be a victory dinner, I was approached by Robert Hornack. I did not know Robert. And I was approached by Robert, and Robert said to me, I'd like to have a few words with you if, if you could give it to me. I said, well, you know, not tonight, but sure. So he introduced himself as Robert Hornack from Queens. He knew politics in Queens, and that was it. We, I really think you have potential to run for state senate. Avella's seat is coming up, and I think we, you've got what we need in District 11. Now, District 11 is the northeastern section of Queens where I was born and raised. I am 64 years old. So I know a little something about where we came from, where we've been, and where we're going, and what we're heading for for sure, which is total annihilation of our state and city government. So, I met with Robert. We met again in December. We met at Thanksgiving, we met in December. And the, the rest, as they say, is history. I filed my papers in January. So now, Paul Malone has been our city councilman, and now they gerrymandered our district something terribly. And uh, I, now have, I don't even know my city councilman's name. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Uh, I'm District 27. So what has happened is, through all of this, I said, well, you know what? Keep my eye on the ball all the time. I said to Robert, I'm going to do it. So he says, OK. I get a call, from because I put up a very good fight right from the start, a fight I didn't know I was going to have to fight. And that was against the Queens County GOP. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. Okay, I'm green. I'm, I was, yay, politics. I was, you know, pro my conservative Republican values. That was how my kids were brought up and raised. Okay, core values, important family values. And, okay, so now I'm in the pit. Belly of the beast, who knew? I get a phone call. And I still have it on my phone. 
and it came from one of the district people in Queens, northeastern Queens, and it was Vicky. We need to have coffee. Okay, I listened to the message. He says, "Please call me. You hooked your cart up to the wrong horse." It said, "Still have it on my phone." We need to meet for coffee. Said, okay. So I waited a while. I called him back. Sorry, I didn't record the phone call. So the phone call was that he hated Bob Hornack. And that's what he meant by hitching my horse up to the wrong car. And I said, well, I really don't care what you think about Robert Hornack. As far as I go, guy's been great. And he's my choice. What's your, what's your, what's your, what's your problem? So he says to me, well, you need to understand the inside workings of the Queen's GOP. I said, excuse me? Yeah. I said, beg your pardon? What in the hell are you talking about? The inside workings of the Queen's GOP. The corruption. I said, what? Yeah, right. what do I know? Again, what do I know? So he says, Vicky, we, we, I said, no, listen, conversation over. Talk to me in a month from now. You want to meet me for coffee? We'll meet for coffee. He called, ne the call never came. So now, the Lincoln dinner rolls around. I filed my papers in January, which by the way, I'm being honored this year, just goes to show you karma. <laughs> I'm being honored this year, the Lincoln dinner is a Republican dinner. <laughs> so, as the, as the story unwinds, I'm at the Lincoln dinner, and somebody comes up to me, I'm speaking, Roger Stone was their guest speaker last year. Right. Oh. And I'm speaking to Roger Stone, introducing, you know, it's just politeness. And um, some woman comes up and bangs into my shoulder and knocks me off my feet. I looked, I said, excuse me, can I help you? So I says, I'm sorry if I'm in your way, do you want some time with Mr. Stone? She says to me, you're Vicky Palladino. I said, yes, I am. Mm -hmm. And you are? She says, I'm Cindy Gross. Oh. <laughs> so I said, well, what do I know? Nice to meet you. <laughs> How do you do? <laughs> nice to meet you. So I didn't know. So, we, so she says to me, um, what's this I hear? You gonna run for state senate? I said, yes, I am. So uh, she says to me, the 11th district in Queens? I says, yes, I am. She said, well, we have a big surprise for you tonight. I had no idea who this woman was. So we're sitting at the dinner, and now Phil Lawrenstein, who is a gentleman and a scholar, he is a wonderful individual. They do this, my first Lincoln dinner. Again, I've never been, I don't know. So I'm sitting there, and we're all sitting at the table. We're ecstatic because took out the full page yet, yeah, think he's running for the New York State Senate. Now, mind you, grassroots folks, we're talking about my kitchen table, okay? We're talking about nobody taking a nickel from me for anything that they've done. Those papers you're looking at that I gave out, my son was my media person, and he did all of my literature. He gave up his livelihood to do this for his mom. But anyway, so we're sitting at the table, and at that table, Phil Lawrenstein gets up and Phil Lawrenstein announces, looks like we have, because they announced everybody important in the room, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I'm sitting there, and it looks like we have a, uh, a primary is gonna be happening in the 11th district in Northeastern Queens for Tony Avella's seat. Okay. I look around the table. <laughs> what the hell's going on? I don't know. So. Two tables away is Eric, the Haggerty's, Joanne Ariola, and two other people. I still don't know who their names are, and I really don't care. Mm -hmm. And I hear them, Phil, say, Simon Minching, stand up and take a bow. Mm -hmm. So I look, I see this young man. Of course I clap. I mean, what do I care? It's a primary. If you want a primary, any primary. It's all part of the American way. So, but I was just shocked because I got knocked over, remember, by Cindy Gross a uh, half hour earlier during the cocktail hour. Hour earlier, 
So I looked at Robert, I looked at my husband, I looked at those that are sitting with me. What the hell is going on? Mm -hmm. 